Look what I've got on my workbench. G'day guys, this is the new High Koki Impact Driver, the 36 volt triple hammer WH36DC third generation. You'll see it as second generation everywhere else. This is a C. Before that was B, and before that was A. The DA had fastening torque of 180 newton meters. The DB had fastening torque of 207 newton meters. And this one, the new DC, has fastening torque of 200 newton meters. Less than the B. It's a bit disappointing. Anyway, we are going to compare it to, at some point in this video, the brand new Makita 18 volt TD172D, the new Makita 40 volt. TD001G or GTD01 if you're in the States, something like that. The top of the line always beats everything Milwaukee impact driver and the top DeWalt, the 887. And the last generation, which was the second generation, the WH36DB, which has higher torque output than this one supposedly. We'll check that in a moment, but let's just compare the two of these models and see what has changed from the last one to the new one. Well, as you can see, there's a bit of a color difference. They call this flare red. I would have called it like dusky pink, something like that myself, but anyway, we won't worry too much about that one. So forget the color, what's different? The first thing I noticed when I pulled this out of the box is, wow, it feels like a Makita. It was so nice in the hand. I picked it up and I actually exclaimed. Yeah, I know, I'm a sad bastard. Other people said when I posted a picture of this a couple of weeks ago, wow, it looks just like a rebranded Makita. What do you reckon? They do look quite similar, but most impact drivers look fairly similar these days, but yeah, quite, quite similar in many regards. Although actually the Haikoki feels nicer in the hand. That's, I really like how that one is feeling. Quite narrow down the bottom here. Looks a bit narrower than the old one, a bit narrower than the Makita, not a lot. Anywho, getting distracted here. They have shifted the control panel from the side here, back up onto the top. I like that, I never liked it down here, because you always go for this area, because every other tool's got it, and that just annoyed me. Also, so many people didn't understand this. They got it wrong, they'd always tell me, you haven't got it on the highest setting, the highest setting's the end one, you've got it on the one before the end. Yeah read the damn symbol. It's just not clear enough, you see. So this had four settings. This has four settings. It also has the word app on there. Hmm. And the light settings on there. The light on this one was a bit rubbish. I have pulled it apart and it seems to be working again now. They look to have improved this front area here where if you've got one of these, you'll know this thing can vibrate off quite easily and the whole front just falls off. And, you know, you don't really want the front to fall off. Some of them are built so the front doesn't fall off at all. Well, wasn't this built so the front wouldn't fall off? Well, obviously not. How do you know? Well, because the front fell off. But the new one has a quite different design, and it looks like they've got a they've got a split ring holding that on there. So that's well and truly stuck on there. They have obviously listened to people's complaints about that falling off, and they've made it good and proper, not going to fall off. doesn't have a rubber bumper, though, like the other one does, and like lots of impact drivers do. So it's a bit... A bit hard there, a bit solid, but you can also see there we have three lights right at the front. Nice bright lights. The old one had that below the actual collet there. Not quite as bright as the other three. Looking at the size, pretty much the same height. This is the main size difference. As you can see, the one on the left is shorter. Not a huge amount, about the length of a chuck or collet. And speaking of that, this is a two-handed chuck. This one you'll notice, a different shape. It sort of comes out, gets wider towards the front, gives you a bit more grip. But unfortunately, still two-handed chuck. Well, you can do it with one hand like that, of course. They're both IP56. They're both triple hammer, which we'll probably talk about later. Let's do the numbers. I like that they've put the panel back up here with the details. On this one, it's down the bottom, which means they left this bit just blank, which kind of just makes it look like a cheap knockoff tool when you've got it facing the wrong way. Why didn't they put high Koki on there? Anyway, it's only one number written on the tools. This one, 0 to 2900. This one, 0 to 3700. What number is that, though? Is it impacts or is it RPM? 
So I have spotted up on my Japanese and it turns out this is 3700 RPM and 4100 impacts per minute. Who can remember how many impacts this was per minute? By comparison, 4300 impacts per minute, RPM 3600. So this one a little bit quicker than the Milwaukee, but less impacts. What about the Makita 40 volt, which is sort of the closest comparison, these both being 36 volt tools. So the Makita, you're looking at 3700 RPM and 4400 impacts per minute. This is also rated 20 Newton meters higher than this. So which one's going to win in our battle later on? Going to be an interesting one. Let's compare it size-wise then to the Makita. Pretty close. It looks like it's fractionally shorter. What are we? Oh, it's maybe... Maybe two mil shorter. Diameter-wise, oh, looks pretty similar. Maybe fractionally smaller as well. From the front, no glow in the dark ring on the one on the left. That's disappointing. <laughs> And even though they have changed this area to up here, they've still got a weird system. No numbers or anything like other brands seem to do. They've got small screw, long screw, then they've got what looks to be a bolt and then a tech screw. So small screw presumably is a slow speed. Then the next one is interesting because we have a long screw. We also have the word app written on there. Definitely high speed at the moment. Then next to that, we have the bolt mode, which I'm assuming is a bolt release mode. So that will be like many impact drivers have now. When the bolt releases, when you're taking off a lug nut or something like that, once the tool breaks the resistance and this doesn't feel it needs to torque anymore, it just shuts down. That way you don't end up losing a nut. If you push that button again, it flashes. So there's obviously two different settings for that. I'll have to look a bit more into that one. And then we have the tech screw mode. Sounds a little strange. Starts off slow, speeds up. Uh, usually they start off fast and then slow down, but it might start off slow so you can seat your screw as it drives through, it speeds up, and then maybe when it feels that bang, when it hits and the resistance and torque kicks in, will it then stop? or slow right down. Well, we'll have to check that out, won't we? I am gonna have trouble showing you this app feature in this video because A, the app is in Japanese only at this stage and you need a Bluetooth battery. If you have the Bluetooth battery and an app that's in a language you can understand, then you can change the speed of the setting. I hate that idea. Put the damn settings on the tool. Why have only two settings? Why not put four on like Makita? Look, Makita's stuck 10 different settings on here. Come on, I, I don't want to have to go into my pocket and get out my phone and hope the Bluetooth's going to connect. I've got the right battery connected and everything just to change the settings so I can drive a screw in. That's ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. I know a lot of guys like it, but come on, you know, it's a bit... Yeah, just because the technology's there doesn't mean it's better. Anyway, let's go compare these things and see if numbers actually mean anything at all on tools these days. This one, remember, 200 Newton meters max fastening torque. This one, 207. But this one has faster speed. So is that going to make it faster than this one? Well, let's find out right now. What should we drive with them? How about, for a change, 100 millimeter, 14 gauge, galvanized batten screw. How's that? Both got a new fully charged 2.5 amp battery. Three. Two, one. Three, two, one. So the two different models were pretty close there as you saw, but in this test we'll do the 2.5 amp hour battery versus the 4 amp hour battery. Uh. Let's see how it does now, up against all the other impacts. Thank you. 
Let's try some of the other features down here. I've got a 19mm socket on here. We're going to go check the nut release modes. There's two of those, so let's go do it. Bolt release setting one. Okay, that didn't do anything. Bolt release setting two. Didn't do anything either. Do it up on bolt release setting two. There we go. So it works going off, but not coming off. Back on the bolt release setting one. I'm not sure which shots I have stuck in the video yet, but I've found with driving self-drilling techies into metal, it doesn't really like the thicker metal. I haven't got that piece here, have I? It, it did it, if you were lucky. That's pretty much what you want. It only has the one setting. The Makitas, these two, the 18 and the 40, both have two, I believe and it just gives you an extra option. This one is better for thinner metals. When you're trying to do a couple of mil, you might find that it starts slowing down and chugging away before you've actually got the tip of the screw into the metal, which is a little bit annoying. Now I've had a lot of people saying that this can beat this. Let's have another little showdown here between these two, being that they are the two Japanese 36 volt brands at the moment. So we'll drive some big screws, see what happens. Try a couple of 12 millimeter, half inch, 100 millimeter long stainless coach screws or lag bolts, depending on where you are on this planet. Um, I'm just gonna tap them into the timber with a hammer and then we'll just see if these two can drive them with no pre-drilled pilot holes. I need to make clear sockets, damn it. Oil spewing out. I've never had oil come out of a Makita. But I have managed to do this to a DeWalt, a Milwaukee, and now, unfortunately, a Hikoki. Well, it let the grease out pretty damn quick. Um, quicker than an 887 from DeWalt. Anywho, what do I make of that? Um, there's a heap of grease just pouring out of inside the collet here and around the outside. Need something to wipe my damn hands on. Give me a minute. Well, I'm somewhat annoyed. I wanted to really like this tool and geez, there's oil on the top as well but it's just not cutting it it is not as hot as I would expect for the amount of oil that's pouring out the front but it doesn't have any exposed metal there so it's a bit hard to tell cool it's hot but not super hot Makita having just done the same tasks not even warm at all always a bit disappointing when a new tool starts popping out grease so early on in its life when it's done less than 100 screws. Yeah, I drove some big stuff, but you know, come on, every now and again everyone's gonna do that sort of thing. I don't think I've ever had any grease come out of this one. I'm gonna go review some footage because, yeah, I just don't know where to go from here, really. For those who like driving little screws, here is your shot. This is on the low speed. Good control at the end, not too quick, so that's nice. And 
on the top speed. Whoa! <laughs> Halfway through the bit of wood before I got my finger off. Perfect. I'm going to try some small screws on the tick sitting there. So that setting's kind of multi-purpose. You could use it for doing screws into metal or Okay, not so good on long ones. But on the short ones, it slows it right down at the end there if you don't want to damage the surface of your timber, especially if you are not too good at trigger control. So what are my thoughts now after using it a bit? Well, you may have seen earlier in the video, I became a bit despondent when I had the grease coming out the front. It put me off big time. It sort of threw me during the testing and just put me in a bad mood. I have had that happen before with this tool and this tool, both of which are still going okay. This tool gets really hot real quick and that's what makes it um, liquefy the grease and it all comes pouring out. So this thing was getting pretty damn hot too and I, that's the problem, it just, the grease gets too liquid and obviously the seal in there is not good enough and out it comes. Having said that, this is a really nice tool to use, it feels nice. It would be really cool if it had like a slim battery or something just to balance the weight up a bit better because it's quite light on the top, but it just feels really nice in the hand. Compared to what this feels like, you know, this is like a Rolls Royce and this is like a Lada. But if you want full on power, that is still the tool for you. But if you want comfort, then this is nice. It's a good size, it's good for getting into places, it's got a good light. It does have... Oh, not going to do it there. It does have a bit of a delay sometimes when you pull the trigger, like the previous generation. It's not as bad as the previous one. And it's not as bad as this thing. I have recently filmed a review of this impact driver, AEG slash rigid. This is rated at 195 newton meters. Look how tiny it is. And that's only five less than this. Let's put them up against each other here just so I can show you how full of it this one is. Oh. So if you want to see my, my full review of this, or if you just want to see this up against a whole lot of other impact drivers, getting the shit kicked out of it, check out builds and stuff down there, up here. Hopefully I will have it out by the time I get this one out. They'll be around the same time probably. So this thing, great for small screws I find. I like the last Hikoki as well. Where is it? I like this one with small screws. When it comes to bigger stuff, I never use it because I have other tools that are far better at whacking in large screws like the Milwaukee you saw just a moment ago. This one I didn't think was doing that well. I used so many different impact drivers and I, I couldn't tell whether this one was doing any good in the test. It didn't, I didn't think it was. But then when I watched the footage, it did a lot better than I thought it had. The results with both of these tools are always a little bit up and down all over the place. Sometimes they're not consistent, let's say. The triple hammer thing seems to create issues. Sometimes it sound, it changes sounds, like it, and it sort of changes speeds. The ham, triple hammer is changing, doing something. I don't know what's going on in there, but it's clicking and clacking in a different way. And I know some people think that's the voltage changing between 18 and 36 volt. That's not how these tools work. These are 36 volt tools. Hikoki don't make any tools that are 18 and 36 volt. It's just the batteries that are 18 and 36, and it works whichever tool you put it on. So if it's a 36 volt tool, it's a 36 volt battery. 18 volt tool, 18 volt battery. It's not starting off an 18 volt feeling power and then changing to 36 volt, okay? That is completely wrong if you have heard that anyway. And the way the triple hammer works is, well, I'll, I'll show you the clip that I did for this video. This is your standard impact driver setup, basically. This is the design used in just about every impact driver around. Whereas the triple hammer is of course triple. So basically, bang, hits these two points. That's what gives you that power to spin your screw around. It's not hammering forward, it's rotational. 
So it does the hammer, then lifts up, spins around another 180 degrees, hammer again, lifts up, around another 180 degrees. Whereas the triple, well of course that can't go 180 degrees, it's going only 120 each time. So you would think maybe it wouldn't get as much momentum as this one, but it's hitting in three points. So does the three point hit overcome the two point hit with the more momentum? People will argue either way on that one. And if you want to see my full review on this video, putting it up against all the other impact drivers, in particular the Makita 40 volt, because that's what was out at the time and that's the most logical thing to compare it with, then have a look down there and up there as well. So do I think this one's better than this one? Not necessarily. They're different. If you're obsessed with size, then this is better. Features wise, they've tried to put a few more on here than this has got, but I don't think they've nailed it or screwed it or whatever you want to call it. I don't think the bolt settings were that. I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but I couldn't get the first bolt setting to do anything in forward or reverse. It didn't seem to be helping. Um, it just was like you were putting it on just with the impact driver on a normal setting. And in setting two, it made a difference, but it wasn't all that helpful. It was nowhere near as good as the Makita ones. Same again with the tech screw type, screwing into metal. It was a bit, a bit hit and miss. Um, you can use it on the wood screws as well, if you wish, but yeah, not as refined as Makita. But then again, they're obviously a bit new to that side of it. Maybe the next one, generation four, five, six, might be better. So if I had that, would I buy that? No, nah, I wouldn't bother. Is this a good impact driver? If you're looking to buy a new impact driver, if you've got high Koki batteries, then definitely. Would I buy that over that? Um, if they were the same price, then yeah, I would buy this. I like tools that are comfortable in your hand so you can use them all day and it doesn't annoy the hell out of you. And these are nice feeling tools in the hand. This is as good in the hand and with the trigger, nice small little trigger there. This area here, perfect. Just like a Makita. In fact, if you got a pair of pliers and you started pulling out my fingernails, I might admit, maybe, that this is a much nicer feeling tool. Would I swap it for a Makita? Oh, I don't know about that one. But it is a nice tool. I'm a little bit concerned about the grease coming out the front. If you want one, they're only available in Japan at present, so check out the link below. There'll be links down there to buy them. They come in all sorts of different colors. There's a bluey, purpley, sort of dark bluey, purpley color. There is a black one. There's the green, of course. There's this flare red or dusky pink. So anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. I've got heaps of videos coming up. We've got so many, it's just trying to film them all is getting tricky. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe below. I'm going to have a whole lot of videos of High Koki versus all the other brands. We may even do something with these. And I will see you on another one real soon. Cheers, guys.